Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another malicious compliance Reddit video. I'm still really trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers, so if you can help me, I'd really appreciate it. Also, Slash Bash now has channel memberships, so check out the join button to find out more. In our first story, when the office slob says don't touch anything on my desk, he probably shouldn't leave perishable items there and then disappear for weeks. Let's jump right in. The cast is Neil, my PR department co-worker, and me, your friendly PR wage slave. Here's some background. This happened about five years ago and did not take place in the United States of America. Neil was an older staff member who worked in several different departments before an abrupt transfer to the PR department thanks to a company-wide reorganization. He had a reputation as a prankster who often slacked off, took frequent sickies, and rarely took things seriously. Though Neil was apparently told off on a regular basis, he was ultimately retained as he did manage to shine on occasion and had pretty good PR skills. Neil could also be fun to work with as long as you got his brand of humor. Unfortunately, Neil also came equipped with a bad temper and rather set ways. The early days were terribly uncomfortable for all of us for several reasons. A forced transfer that no one wanted, the wide age gap between him and the rest of the team, approximately 15 years on average, being the only male in the PR department, department culture clash with Neil's previous departments being much more relaxed and laid back and the PR department a more buttoned up, fastidious and fast paced work environment. Though it all somehow eventually worked out in the long run, there were a fair number of conflicts at first, especially between Neil and me, as I was tasked to get him up to speed. I could appreciate that it most certainly wasn't easy for a man at his age to have to be guided through nearly everything by someone almost young enough to be his daughter, but that our personalities did not gel well made it that much worse. Case in point, the existing PR department staff were all conscious about neatness and cleanliness to some degree, while Neil was, to put it mildly, almost the exact opposite. He left his jackets and blazers on the floor on a regular basis and thought nothing of rolling chairs across them, placed coffee cups and snacks on top of official documents, and submitted them with coffee cup and oil stains, and once built a pyramid of used coffee cups instead of throwing them away. Said pyramid reached a count of about 12 coffee cups, or around four and a half days worth of coffee before the PR director noticed it and made him throw them all away. Neil salt for hours after that. The buildup. I was seated right next to Neil in a small, relatively isolated corner of our semi-open concept office that was oddly blocked off by some pillars due to nothing more than piss poor planning and only had space for two desks. The nearest coworker was about 30 steps, a fax machine, and a corner away. I tried not to mess with Neil's personal space beyond binning an empty coffee cup or two, or three, or four, or almost completely devoured bread if I noticed them still on his desk after he left for the weekend on Fridays. But about three months after Neil's transfer, my dust allergy started acting up and I figured that it was due to the inch thick layer of dust decorating Neil's table and cabinets. I told Neil about my allergies and asked if he could clean his desk more frequently. He agreed and did so for a while at first, but soon lapsed into his old habits. Request and even please did not work. Our PR manager stepped in to talk about his hygiene habits and it worked, but that too only for a few weeks. With Neil's permission, I eventually took to cleaning his table when I cleaned mine once in a few days. He was appreciative of this at first, until I inadvertently destroyed his second attempt at the pyramid of used coffee cups. It devolved into an argument that required a meeting held in a conference room with both our PR manager and PR director in attendance, and ended with Neil slamming his hand on the table demanding that I never, ever, ever 
touch a thing on his desk again without his permission. Not even a speck of dust, because it's his area and I had no right to intrude. By that time, we had lost half a day to the argument and I just wanted to get back to my work. So I simply agreed and we all stomped back to our respective desks like a herd of angry elephants. Malicious Compliance Neil was a local but was born in a place much, much further away. His parents, long retired, opted to return to Neil's birthplace where they still retained a home in the countryside. Neil would make frequent trips to visit them, and each time he did, he would bring back perishable snacks, or what we jokingly called fancy gold leaf biscuits, as an internal joke after a bit of a mix-up the first time we saw them from his trips. The fancy biscuits needed to be kept chilled after a day or two, or they would turn bad and moldy and even stink after a while. There were occasions when Neil forgot to place them in the fridge before going off for the day, and I always helped him do so if I noticed. He likewise always thanked me for that as not only were they expensive, they were handmade and could only be bought from a particular shop some distance from his hometown. About a month after our argument, Neil leaves for his regular trip and comes back with the usual fancy biscuits on a Friday. As was his wont, he dashes off for his regular Friday drinks, completely forgetting about the perishables on his desk. I nearly pick them up, but blessedly recall his demand just in time. Respecting his wishes, I do not touch them and simply give an unladylike snort before leaving for the weekend. Monday. Neil calls in sick. Alright, hope you get better soon, Neil. Tuesday. Neil calls in sick again. He's going to see a doctor. Wednesday, Neil calls in. He's been given three days rest. Get well soon, Neil. Thursday, no Neil. Friday, no Neil. Second Monday, Neil calls in saying his water pipe burst and needs to stay at home to clean up the mess. He can't get PR manager or PR director as they are in meetings. Can I let them know? Of course, Neil. I'll let them know. Second Tuesday, no Neil. PR manager informs me he has taken an extra day off. Second Wednesday, Neil returns and is absolutely aghast at the state of his desk. His fancy biscuits, which he left unboxed, have turned into a living work of art with beautiful moss green gray mold mixed with some swirls of delicate blue hues and deep winding black strips in the foreground. It is spilling over one side of the box and eating into the cardboard as it valiantly attempts to join the miniature art piece that is one half-eaten brethren fallen partway out of the box. There is a ghastly smell permeating the entire section of our office, one that wasn't noticed any earlier, just maybe possibly because of the gigantic transparent plastic box that I dangled over his desk. It almost completely covered the fancy biscuits using a DIY rod made from an extendable clothes stick, raffia string, and lots and lots of tape. I made sure the box didn't meet the table, so technically speaking, I hadn't even touched a single speck of dust as per his request. There are people bustling around trying to find the source of the weird smell, but haven't quite reached our little isolated corner yet. I'm wearing two layers of surgical face masks with a generous daub of mint toothpaste in between to ward off the smell as I go on with my work while waiting for Neil's arrival. Neil's face is a picture, and he stands there gaping like a fish for a good minute before he turns puce as he realizes what has happened and storms up to me. For a moment, I think I'm about to experience the brand new sensation of being beaten up by a coworker as we stare and glare at each other in silence until Neil bursts into laughter and tears. We've been pretty all right since then. Well, mostly. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.